Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to Adorama Events. We are live at the Adorama store itself, 42 West 18th Street in New York. If you're around, come on by because uh, I brought Mark Cruz in here. I literally dragged him in here because I didn't get a chance to really <laughs> check out the 135 F1.8 Plena from Nikon for the Z mount. This is a long weighted lens for anyone who's been looking for the 135. I've been seeing on message boards a lot of wedding photographers like 135, portrait people. It's a, it's a, yeah. it's a weird focal length. Like you either really want it, it's kind of got a niche look to it, but this one. This one's a little special. Just a quick spec rundown. 11 blade aperture, really smooth round aperture shape. So you got nice texture to that bouquet. Bouquet. It's Correct. also 135, so it's a long focal length, but still also gives you a short minimum focusing distance of like 2.6 meters or something like that. So you can get pretty close with a long focal range at a wide aperture of 1.8. With that shape of that aperture, you get some pretty special images there. So. I just want to say, uh, first of all, welcome, Mark. I totally just thank you. bulldozed this whole thing. Your, your, your new set is banging. I love thank it. Thank you. Thank you. It's all, it's all Nikon cameras, so I thought you'd like that. It's amazing. Thank it's you. Amazing. Thank it's you amazing. Thank you so much. Thanks, man. It's Congratulations like, on yet another release. You just did the ZF. Yes, we have that here, too. <laughs> In quick succession, within a week, we have the ZF release and the new Plena release. So really excited for that. And uh, we're actually gonna be, I think, hitting the store shelves at the same time, these two. So you guys won't have to wait very long from the time that we announced it. We teased the Plena last week, and just this week we formally announced it. Plena, your, your pronunciation is correct. Um, <laughs> the only Brooklyn I got. And I, I, <laughs> I, I already see some questions why Plena, and maybe I'll just address that. It is the second lens that we've had a dedicated name to. So the first one was the Noct. That's right. So uh, on this one, the Plena, we actually have the engraved name right on the lens itself. And that means it, it's really derived from the Latin root plenum, which was a state of being completely full. And that's really the way we <laughs> sort of thought about this because the size of the Z mount and the, the, the size of this rear element here and the way we've designed this, oh. yeah, the way we've designed that, this lens just completely envelops the sensor in light. And so this was the real achievement with this lens is the groundbreaking peripheral illumination. So everything from the center to the edges is lit very evenly and the description of the bokeh and the transition of the in-focus and out-of-focus elements is special for this lens. So that's really the, the distinction of the Plena. Um, but you're right, it's, it's sort of a lens that we haven't had in our lineup for a long yeah. time. We have it in our lineup right now in the form of a defocus control lens. It's the 135 F2 DC, but we released that over, well, I think by now, almost 30 years ago, 1995, I think was the last iteration of it. And that was um, a major rumor for this lens was defocus control, would it have it? Yeah, I know, and I saw those rumors on Nikon Rumors, and I'll just address that. I mean, you know, other brands have tried defocus control lens. The deficiency there is that the peripheral illumination, the vignetting, is, is tends to be worse on those lenses. Mm. So the main goal with this was to give the top-notch optical performance. So, um, you know, defocus control has its purposes, but for this, we opted to just go pure uh, 135. And, and you're looking at images from this lens right here as I, as I cycle through them. Uh, but I do want to address a couple things. One, there's a question in the chat. Is this a line of lenses Plena, or is this just the name for this particular lens? Yes, that's a good question. It's the name for this particular lens. So this is still part of the Z-series, and it's also graded as an S-line lens. So it's an S-series lens, but it's like an advance at the top of the pyramid of S-line lenses, similarly to the Noct. But the great thing about this is, unlike the Noct, it's not, it's not, you know, uh, weighted in like five pounds. It's not just manual focus, it's autofocus. Right. And um, it's far more affordable for people, whereas the Noct was, I think, close to $8,000. Yeah. This is gonna be around the price range, actually even less than the 85 millimeter 1.2. So 85 right. millimeter 1.2 is, I think, about $27.99. This will be going for uh, about $24.99, $2,500. So a couple of questions in the chat. I think um, this is going to lead to the, to the discussion. One, yeah, this projects a larger image circle. And uh, that, what that gives you guys is at like 1.8, you can still get sharp edge to edge because it's the edges of that circle of confusion that give you that softness. And if it's larger than what it's projecting onto, which is your sensor, you're going to have a sharper edge, which is pretty great. And vignetting, yes. Uh, sometimes I like vignetting. I'm one of those guys that's all about the character of a lens, not so much like this high specification thing. 
I do want to ask you this, because I know it's a weird thing for Nikon enthusiasts as a rumor, and I'm just going to put you on the spot. Like, never before. Yes. Like, never like, before. Put me on the spot like... <laughs> He says that on every live stream for Nikon. Is like, this is like Ibis, like never before. It's like everything's never before with this guy. Um, so people are actually wondering is if you guys are projecting larger than a full frame sensor, is there a play for medium format in the future of Nikon? Oh. <laughs> I gotta ask, as a GFX guy as well, I gotta ask. I, in, in, the, in the near future, we can't really speculate, but uh, I mean, uh, I don't see anything uh, in our near future for, for that. It's, more, it's mostly focused around the <laughs> format of full frame yeah, because it. of the, the, the versatility of it. I mean, you look at full frame formats right now, I mean, they're typically very slow in terms of uh, focus and things like that. So with this Z series, I think it's the perfect sort of uh, balance in terms of the performance that we can get, the, the size of the lenses we can get, the new apertures we can get um, all around that short flange distance of the Z mount, the large diameter of the Z mount. It's allowed us to make all these now 1.2 and now this 135, 1.8 lenses. We'd never be able to do this with the F mount. Right. Um, so we're happy where we're, we're at right now. And plus, this mount can double as a DX. So we have the ZFC, we have the Z50 and the Z30, all with that same mount, so we can use all the same lenses in the system. We don't have to have two distinct systems, one for the DX format, one for the FX. Everything revolves around the Z. Yeah, and uh, I think what's an interesting conversation also, I know you're probably not even gonna wanna talk about this, but I got him here, he's live, he can't run anywhere. Um, the 58 Noct was a really special lens and it was expensive at eight grand, but what people don't realize is that a lot of people were kind of using them for cinema purposes, and eight grand is actually like a really cheap cinema lens right. with that kind of uh, knock. Is, wh what are, we, are we looking at Nikon kind of brushing against a cinema lens lineup with, with, with trying to hit these marks? Well, it certainly can be used for those purposes. Given the, the results that we get from this, we've used that word uh, when we describe the images and the videos that we get from this. It does have a cinematic look, especially this uh, plena here. We have some uh, portrait shots there where you see the transition of the gradations from in focus to out of focus. Uh, it's, it's, uh, this one is more dramatic, what you're seeing up there yeah, on the yeah. screen. But we have, some, we have some other shots where you have leaves in the foreground and the background, and it's uh, a very gentle um, um, thing. Now what you're seeing there up on screen, that's really one of the big achievements of this lens is that typically you have cat's eye bokeh when you're shot wide open on point light sources. And soap it's, bubbles. Sure, yeah, and that, and the onion rings and things like that. All the we fun have, names. We have, uh, yeah, very technical. <laughs> this is, hits another achievement in that we've pretty much wiped out all of that onion ring and, and fringing around the point light sources. But as you can see there, it's getting close to, I think our engineer referred to it as a lemon-shaped. Oh it's my It's near gosh. round, but oh I mean, you stop it down a little bit, it'll become a perfect circle. But this is as close to near round as we've been able to generate with any of our lenses shot wide open. Even the 85 1.2 uh, produces, you know, I won't say cat's eye, but it's, it's more oblong. Uh, no, when shot wide open, when you really have to go to f2 to achieve yeah. a circle on the uh, 85. And you guys actually saw that so, on my first live stream in here when I shot with Ashley. We shot into the crowd using iPhone flashlights as the background. And you could see when I stopped on f2, it gets rounder because that's when the aperture actually closes in to make that shape rather than just being wide open. And I got to say, and, and I'm not a snob when it comes to the bokeh. I, they're all like, no, it's got to be like, it. I don't care. It just looks clean. I care more about transition mm -hmm. than like, a light looking like a perfect circle. Right, 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 right. It, it's about character of lens, you know? It's, it's not all about, I don't know, every lens has its own personality, I guess I'll put it. And, and I'll tell you that is, uh, the interesting thing about Nikon engineers is that when they design these lenses, they don't just benchmark in terms of they want to hit a certain sharpness, because there is a point where too much sharpness can make things look- Clinical. Uh, clinical CGI almost. So we pay a lot of attention to the transition of, in, like what you, have, what you had up on screen there, transition from in focus to out of focus. It has to be a soft transition. Similarly to the, you mentioned it before we started, the 105, 1.4, and even the 58, 
the from mount. the F-mount F series. Mount. Those lenses were, uh, you know, I'll take the 58 for example, it was four times more than the 51.4, but, uh, but it had a beauty to it. It had a, a quirkiness to it yes. just because of the way that they designed the bokeh or the transition from in focus to out of focus. And not just the background, but the foreground as well. So you'll see people that we, uh, you know, so, sort of commissioned for this launch to shoot this using foreground bokeh in a lot of the shots. So you talked about cinema. Um, I think that's a good part of this that you'll see in a lot of our examples that people are starting to use the foreground more as an element in composing their shot. Yeah, there's a question in the chat, and you guys are super welcome to ask questions. That's the point of doing this live. You guys can have a nice polished edited video of like me speaking to lens using something, but this is a resource for you. So you got Nikon right here. This this is Nikon right across his face. <laughs> so uh, don't you know don't fret on that. The question is, what is the business case to add a planner for a shooter who's happy with the 70-200 2.8? Like oh. I've been saying, it's a character thing. It's not just, oh, 135 exists in this focal range I already have. Do I gain anything with 1.8? No, you really have to look at the quality of the lens is giving you, and is that the personality you want to slap across that image that you're trying to create for that moment or that client? Can I also address that? That's a good question. That was Please. Andy's question. Please. So uh, just recently, we had a wedding photographer shoot this lens for the for our launch, and um, what they said was with the 135 because they were shooting video, and uh, the Z8 has a built-in DX crop, as is w would be same for photo, except you you know you lose the resolution. You, with the DX crop on this, you're just about a 200, I mean, it might exceed it by, I think, 202 millimeters. So it's practically a 200 millimeter. So what you have in your hands is something that uh, the two, F, 70 to 200 simply can't produce in terms of the, the shallowness of the depth of field, the isolation and the versatility that you get with that. It's way, I mean, it's, it's much brighter than an F2.8. So even though that the, the utility of 70 to 200 is good with the zoom, the character that you're going to get with right. this lens is a whole nother ball game. Plus, you can mimic the F, the 200 millimeter with the DX crop. Yeah, and I want to address something that I saw in the forums because I just love all the hate forums, you know? Um, they were like, oh, it's not a 1.2. I don't think you guys understand that <laughs> <Yeah>. what a 1.2, <laughs> 135 would have looked like, how much it would have cost, how heavy, how big. But the reality is, it kind of acts like the 1.2 in the series. You get an 85 and a 50 1.2 with an 82 millimeter thread. This has an 82 millimeter thread. So you're just kind of like seamlessly going from those shallow lens to shallow lens to shallow lens. All three with the same filter. Yeah, and I, I really appreciate that personally because if you use high-end ND filters, you know exactly what I'm talking about, how expensive those can get. Now you just have to have the one and it translates across the line. If you're in that shallow series, I'll, I'll call it the Nikon yes. shallow series. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. No, that's a good question. I think yeah, I've, I've seen that speculation. Why not 1.2? But yeah, you're, everything you said is right. It, it would be massive. Yeah. I mean, it would just be ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, guys, let me know. And also, how thin do you need that, that depth of field where you just don't have anything in focus <laughs> anymore? Uh, let me know in that chat. Hit a bunch of uh, capital Qs if you can. We'll take a look at some more images out of this lens. But this, where would you put this in a lineup for someone that's building out a kit? Like, is this for uh, someone that's looking to build out that high resolution setup? Is it someone, what do you think? Well, I think portrait specialists, I think first and foremost, uh, are gonna be really enamored with this oh, lens. Of course, you have an 85 millimeter in our lineup, which gives you a wider angle. But you know, what the 135 gives you is, is, is quick access to things. It's a different working distance. Um, but you have, uh, you know, a different sort of compression. I, I, I put the two next to one another, and the way it compresses, it's radically different than the 85. So um, that's one thing. The characteristics are different. What was that, the original question? Well, this, the, <laughs> I got a better question. Macy in the chat's asking, why STM? I was wondering that too. You went with stepping motors instead of linear motors. Let's yeah, talk the, about that. Yeah, it's a, in this case, it's a dual stepping motor. Um, the, the benefit of the stepping motor, even if it's not as fast as a linear motor, the, the, where it uh, achieves the best is the accuracy. The accuracy of the stepping motor is very good. In this case, we're using a multi-focus system. So it's really two motors in one. Yeah. And that improves the optical focus and quality when you're focusing from near to far. That's the benefit of the multi-focus system. So the close range focusing is really um, high performance when we have that multi-focus system. Plus the silence on the stepping motor I think is the best. Um, I'm with you on that. Yeah. And, and also I'm shocked at how fast this focuses. I'm just going to say that on, as a personal note on this, I don't care if you guys buy it or not. I'm just telling you it focuses fast. Right. But uh, there's a pre-order. When will it actually ship? Is the ask from Steve Land. Oh, uh, <laughs> he's playing <October>. with that. <laughs> 
I had to prove what you were saying was true. Uh, October 12th. Yeah, October, oh, that's tough. Yeah. That's, that's like two yeah. weeks. Yeah. Man, it's look amazing. at this guy. Yeah. That's the first day of Comic-Con here in New York. Along so. with, <laughs> along with uh, this guy right here, around the same time, the, the ZF. The ZF, I, got it, I, I did the that's video so. for the ZF, and I gotta yeah. say, this was a fun yeah, little Yeah, check banger. out Seth's video on the Adorama YouTube channel. It's really good, comprehensive. And Thank everything, you. Uh, you, you got it. You got the concept of the ZF, and it's. Uh, when it's we, a, you know, I'm sorry, but when we do the when we do videos for any of the brands, like the first, we don't just pick it up and go shoot and go. Why isn't it doing this? We go. What was the idea? Mm -hmm. What were you going for? Because not everything is for everything, you know. But when I, I swear, I'm not gonna lie to you. When when Alfredo came to me, I'm like, all right, give me the Z6 with dials glued to it, and then I'm like, oh, the interface feels like the Z8. Oh, the autofocus Z8's mm. in this thing, and they started running down the back. You know, you know they start specs spinning in the yes. back of your head while you're using it. And it just kept on getting clearer and clearer. And then I'm like, wait a second, this thing is too grand. Mm -hmm. And I got an engine of a flagship and I got this. And the image quality out of this is, I don't know how to describe it. I just put a short on my personal YouTube channel of all the frames I shot out of this. Take a look at the image quality. There's something, I don't know, is it the same sensor as the Z6 II? It's, I don't think it is, right? It is the same, uh, pretty much the same sensor as the Z6 II, but it's got the processor of the Z8 and the Z9. We've done some tweaks to it, so. Yeah, because you have the more autofocus points. Yes, yeah, we have more autofocus points and auto area AF. So it goes right to the edges, like pretty yeah. much 99% of the way. There's all, it's just so, it was, it was, this is one of the rare, I'm not gonna say that and the videos aren't fun, but this was a, this was really fun to like get in my hands and kind of dig through as opposed to a camera that's just kind of like another one in the lineup. This really feels like it's standing out there. Um, if you haven't checked out my video, the ZF video is on Adorama TV, the same channel. If you're new to this channel, hit subscribe. What are you doing? Hit subscribe, stick with us, hit the bell so you're notified when we go live for things like this. I mean, where are we going from here, man? I mean, your your lens map seems like you've pretty much filled it out. Yeah, you've been monitoring that, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what Seth's referring to is that when we started this uh, Z series, we released, uh, it's, it's very uncharacteristic of an icon. They released a roadmap and told you everything that they're gonna come out with and for some the next surprises. three years. And some surprises that we dropped in there. So uh, if you go on our website, there's really, a, we've cleared it out. There's really only one more on the roadmap, and that's a 35. We don't say what aperture it's at. Um, we all know. We all know. We <laughs> I know he's here, but we all know what aperture that is. Please. You play these coy games. I'm not under your roof. You're in my house. You know what, you know what aperture it is, guys. There you go. Okay. So, um... <laughs> So that's the only thing. So I, I mean, it's uh, it's an exciting time because um, we've effectively built a system now that's over 40 lenses that has everything from macro to seven uh, 2.8 lenses, affordable 2.8 lenses now. Yeah, um, uh, we have uh, in this now. I believe we have the mesoamorphous coating as well as the RNA. Finally, coating. we were all waiting for the mesoamorphous, the mesoamorphous coating. Amorphous, yes, so guys, <laughs> you've been playing this game with nano coatings and RNA coatings. Right. Where was the everybody in this chat was just talking about all the meso coat they were just talking about <laughs> they were wondering where's the meso coating yeah well, go ahead something. what's the meso coating <laughs> so the mesomorphous coating is something that we put on the 400 28 and the 600 millimeter f4 that's the only two lenses that we've had that on this is the first short lens and those are like thirteen thousand dollar lenses right guys. 13, like. five, fifteen thousand dollar lenses so what it does is it reduces the lens flare uh, minimizes it to the maximum extent so there's nothing on the market that that comes close to mesomorphous and you're almost famous as asking what about the flare performance you're you're literally looking at it. That's pointed directly into a light right, source right, right. around a silhouette, which is still open up. Shows you the dynamic range of the Nikon system as well, which I've always been very happy with. I uh, would love to see Nikon do a prime super wide between 11 and 14. I would as well. I've been waiting for a 14 to 8. Like, I want a stubby. Listen, I'm going to give you my wish. Yeah. I want a stubby wide angle like this. That's like a 2.8. I don't care about focus breathing, whatever. I just want like a jammer lens that's like this big. I can throw it in my bag and know I got a super wide. Mm -hmm. With, with tomorrow, the, 3 p.m. Tomorrow, I need it. Yeah. <laughs> Put it on my desk. And you know what? I got him here. I'm doing it. I want a Nikon rangefinder. Mm. You did this. Mm. Cute. Okay. Give me the rangefinder. Right. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm here. I'm taking notes. Taking you, mental you remember notes. Remember the Nikon S? Remember the, the, all those? Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. Now do a Z yeah. version, homie. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I, 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 <laughs> we'll I'm putting see. him on the spot. I don't care. I don't care if the Nikon hates me after this one. I want my rangefinder. <laughs> I need everything to be in line with the axis of the lens. Even the le even even the I'm a I'm a guy that likes the tilt screen. It's a different way of shooting. Yeah. It's a different okay. you're you're picking up knowing you're going into this casual moment of living inside the lens for that extra few seconds. Mm -hmm. I, anyone who's into range fires in the chat, you can back me up. 
Uh, will there be a 180 or 200 macro? That's interesting. Are you guys looking at more macro options? 180, oh, for the long one, yeah. You know what, we never even, see that that lens right there, We only, that, that was back in the AFD days. We didn't we didn't even come out with an AFS version of that, but it was, uh, a, it was a popular one. I, I owned that lens for a long time too, but uh, that's not, on the roadmap, I think if you if you've never picked up the 105 uh, macro 2.8, uh, check that macro out. 105 macro is awesome. Yeah. Actually, I did check a video on out. that. You can check that out on Roman TV. I did that with the 50 macro. Was it 50 55? Oh, uh, the the 50. The 50. Yeah. So I did both macro lenses yeah. on a rooftop here in New York. Yeah. Check out that video right here on the same channel. Uh, but let's go back to this 135 because I feel like I'm going to run, run yeah. him down a rabbit hole of wish list that we're never going to get any answers out of. He's he's going to play this whole politician thing. Like, oh, maybe we've been thinking about that, eh? You know, that whole <laughs> thing. <laughs> A Canadian I, politician. I got, I got nothing but love for you, player. <laughs> so what was, uh, what was like the goal on this one? Was it to get to a lens that has a special look? Because I think everyone was just waiting for 135. I don't think anybody was looking for a special like Plena. Well, or... you know, when we when we talk, when the engineers ask us what, what we should get, a lot of the things, a lot of the times when we ask them for things, it's these exotic lenses. You know, everyone has a 70 to 200, to 24 to 70, a 14 to 24. But when you think about special lenses, a lot of times it's this one around this 100 area here with a exotic wide open aperture. And now we can develop that because right. we have this this mount. So when we thought of you know these ideal portrait lenses, you know, 200, we had the 200 f2, but that was gigantic. That that was, I, you um, know, I almost bought one used and I and it was right before the 85 came out and right. I was like, I'm good with this 85. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> but I think a, a lot of people liked the 135 that, that we had on the F mount, but it was just so old and we had to bring it up to current yes. standards. So if you look at our lineup, we've never had a 135 modern day, not even an AFS version, no? you know, back in the day. Yeah, it, I mean, it was, it was AFD. Uh, I believe so. It, it, you can't even, I think, focus that on a Z system, so because it requires a motor. So, a D drive, right? So yeah. uh, you know, coming out with this here, it gives people that look at the system as a whole uh, sort of this uh, lens to aspire to because it it gives them kind of like the pinnacle of compression, um, uh, the working distance, the, the viewing angle, and just the way it renders facial features, it's yeah, more yeah. complementary in terms of the dimensions of the face, the, the ears, the nose. The way it compresses and stretches. And right. Yeah. So, you know, between that and, you know, 85, 105, 135, all those three, they have their different characteristics, but they're very complementary to the, you know, the human proportions. I also want to bring up the fact, something that no one seems to really bring up in their lens reviews is a lot of the color you get out of an image is in the color space of the glass. So it's really, when you're seeing colors come out, it's what the lens is, is pulling out of the light to then deliver to a sensor to interpret. So a lot of the color space in your images, no matter what you shoot, is the lens. Some lenses shoot warmer, some shoot cooler, some shoot more contrasty. This is really clean. I mean, it's a very nice color tone on this thing. The, the skin tones look really nice. Some of those have been adjusted there, but from, but yeah, you're, you're, um, I'm sure, I mean, you can yeah. tell they're adjusted. They're yeah. definitely color graded. That's, yeah. that's graded. Great. Yeah. Yeah. That's totally graded. But I, I, I do like Nikon's black and white. Actually, we haven't seen a lot of black and white out of this lens. I bet you Matt Irwin will get on that. My mm -hmm. buddy, Matt, if you haven't checked out his channel, check him out, Matt Irwin. Uh, he actually got this ahead of time. We, I, I, when, when they told me, Hey, do you want to do a video on this? I was like, Nikon, I have no time for you. And so that's why we're here live today. But I, I kind of regret it. I kind of wish I got, I, I got my hands on this and we tried to knock it out. But you know how it is, man. I got to say, it, it's, it's almost exactly like an 85. Yes, very much so. If you look at the exterior of it, it's, it's very similar in volume, I guess you could say. But it's a little bit lighter than the 85. So the 85 is a 1.2. This is a 1.8. The dimensions, I mean, the focus ring, where the rubber is, it's, it's very similar. If I was similar. feeling around my bag, I wouldn't be able to tell ah, which one, one is which. One differentiation I will let you know. Starting with the Plena, um, it's our policy now to release all S-line lenses with a function button on top. Uh, so that when you're do doing a... Yeah. There you go. So uh, typically we've had the function button over on this side and that's really to facilitate when you're holding it in, you know, horizontal orientation, you can access that with your thumb. But when you go vertical like this, you know, typically our lens is always, sorry, there we go, always <laughs> only had it here. Now you can hold it over here. Nice. Even if you, if you had a grip like I do here, you know, if you had this grip like that and you're doing a lot of these portraits all day long, you can easily access that function button here. So this, this button, uh, this 
uh, this function LFN button here mimics what that would be programmed to. So they, they, they have the same behavior, it's just that it's easier to access. So as I said before, going forward, anything with an S-line lens, whether it's a telephoto lens or a mid-zoom or whatever, we'll have that at the top now. Uh, so there's a question asking if there'll ever be an AFD to FTZ adapter. I think it's been a long uh, a request from Nikon people because they just want their AFD uh, lenses to transition over. Yeah. Oh, look at his head hang. You made him sad. You broke Mark, guys. No. <laughs> That's not on the roadmap. I, I can tell you that. Yeah, but, but a lot I of mean... things weren't on the roadmap. We saw, we, things came out. First of all, this 24 to 120 was supposed to be a 24 to 105, and they sucker punched us. Sucker punched? Dude, was I was so like sad. We... Ask Heather. I was like, why, why aren't you guys doing the 120? And she, she was like, I don't, I don't get it either. And then when this came out, I was like, oh, thank God. Oh, it was, it was a fake. It was a fake yeah, out. There was, was other lenses out. that popped up out of nowhere. I was like, what is this? I think the 40 millimeter was out of nowhere. Yeah, right. Uh, oh, gosh, I can't remember now. Oh, yeah, we, had, we had a couple of surprises. That's oh, interesting. The, uh, the uh, 180 to 600. We totally gave you an, a <laughs> free so extra You're 20 so millimeters. Excited. It was on the roadmap for 200 to 600, and we gave you an extra 20 for free. And that was one lens that every wildlife and sports guy was just crying for, and I, I understand it. And, they, and, and I think they gave you a really great option out there. I think the 400, uh, oh, what was it, 4.5? Uh, oh yes, 400, 4.5, correct. Yeah. I, I shot that video at the zoo here, in the Bronx right here, so check out that video. I thought that lens was a, was a, a knockout release. It's just really exciting to see the maturing of the line. It's no longer like, it's Gen 1. Where are they going to go? Now it's like, all this banging glass. You've, you've done the things you said you were gonna do, and now we're just kinda like, moving forward into the maturing of the system, rather yeah. what is the system. And I think, and, and what I love is like the buttons are all in the same places on the cameras, the menus are all in the same on all the cameras. Like if you're in the system, you know the system, uh, the grown out of annoyance out of No, I, I saw a, a thing there about the Andy, Mel Andy Miller saying about the, uh, the LCD at the top. Yeah, so we've sort of stopped that practice um, uh, a while back now. So we no longer, I mean, He's referring to the top panel that says Nikkor when you when you turn it on yeah. and it has your aperture. It's cool looking. It's, it is cool looking, but um, we've decided to go forward with this more functional um, LFN button. Yeah, I'm down with something that that I that I can't break. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Uh, there is someone uh, I think Ronald asked about why no tripod collar. Oh, it's not that heavy. It really isn't. Yeah, no, it's not. I, I yeah, it's. Uh, I think they're thinking of the the Sigma, right? I think it has a tripod collar on it. Maybe like Sigmas yeah. do tend to be a little yeah. bit larger on their. Yeah, on their no, lenses. it's very light. This is 995 grams for those of you in the Commonwealth. Uh, it's oh, like, geez. what is that? Like two pounds or something? I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna say my personal opinion if that counts for any of you guys. If you're you you know the 85 one two and you're used to that. This feels super similar. Like I can't even. But it's lighter. It's lighter it, it than is, the 85 one two. No, it's lighter, but like. If you put that in your head, you'll go, oh yeah, it's lighter. But for me, it this feels like he just put the 85 on this camera. And as a guy who knows the Z8, who knows the 85, uh, that's that's from a, from me. If that was that that that's worth anything to you. But I think the real story of this lens is the straight up look out of this thing. I mean, I got Fahad over here, one of our own guys, who's been crying about this lens since he saw the images out of it. Get over here. You want to talk? You want to say what's up? Yay, well, Fahad. While, he, while he's coming up here, hey, bring bring him up. Are you on? Wait, hold on. Let me put you on three. Oh my god. Yeah. So oh, there we go. First of all, I love this guy. He's one of the most talented guys here, and he's been here forever. He's Fahad. Fahad is OG. Uh, let me put you. There we go. Yes. All right. Okay. So you. I, it's been really interesting hearing you go like, but look at this lens. Tell me. Tell me why. Uh, I was actually working on the NPA, designing the, uh, designing the emails and all the web assets. And I couldn't get over how good like the images looked. And I was telling Mary, I'm like, do you see those bouquet? Like, <laughs> I was like, it's just crazy. It was just very magical, uh, just looking at those images. So, yeah, that was, my impression was like mind blowing. Well, you'll try it out later today, I guess. Yeah, well. But and this is a guy who has to look at all the bouquet from all the lens releases when he does all the graphic design for it. So that's that's got to have some weight for it. And, and everybody clap for Fahad in the chat. He doesn't get enough like screen time, everybody. Give him like emojis and stuff. <laughs> I did want to address a question. There was somebody that asked something about the roadmap after the 35. Are we going to release uh, a new roadmap? Now, you know what? The purpose of the roadmap has uh, has met its life. That the the we we've lived by it. Yeah, no, it, it, it's it's served its purpose is what I meant. So it served its purpose. Uh, 
after that 35 is released, it's just going to be surprises from here on in. Pleasant surprises. We're gonna oh, surprise no new you. roadmap. No new roadmap, no. You, man, you guys just don't want to stick to promises. That's what it is. <laughs> what are you talking this is about? Brand. This Every is typical we, brand stuff. Not only do we stick to promises, but we exceed them with you know these new surprises like the you know the 180 to 600 or the um, you know some of these other things that weren't on the road map. Is there anything you personally have been like thinking you'd want to see in the lineup? Not talking to engineers, not knowing what's going on with the brand. Oh. What's something that Mark Cruz oh. has had on his dream list? Yeah, you know, okay, like, no so one's the ever one, asked me. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing I do sort of, um, uh, I still use is the 58 millimeter 1.4. You guys live on this 58 1.4. I don't know. I, I bought into it, but but I still, <laughs> I, 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 I use the, the, the 50 millimeter 1.2 now a lot. I use that a lot. lot. Yeah, 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 I use it a lot, but there was something mystical about that. So I still use it on my F6 quite a bit. Um, and uh, yeah, no, but I, I'm pretty happy with everything that, they have in the lineup now. I, even, even all the telephotos have been sort of fleshed out. We need some wides, dude. That 14 to now, 8. I'll, I'll tell you this, though. Um, a lot of people tell me that they l they want to see a 70 to 200 F4 in the Z system. Um, even internally, some people have said that. But for those of you watching, definitely check out our uh, 70 to 180. 2.8 because you know the, the back in the day the real reason you would get an f4 would be to reduce the weight and cost the size and cost now we have this 70 to 180 2.8 version that's super duper light it's 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 uh, illogically light um <laughs> but now you don't have to sacrifice that a stop of light no nah, it's true yeah. I, and i think that there's been a lot of uh, options and also you guys have been i don't know if i could talk about it, but like you we've been seeing some third party options out there for the Z system, and I think that's been setting you guys more maturing forward to get people in the system. Yeah, I mean, like uh, even with the the ZF here, we're we're gonna have a um, uh, third party grip from Small Rig. Yeah. And uh, so you've been doing stuff with Small Rig for a long time. Right. Now. Yeah. So for video, there's a lot of accessories now, a lot of um, compatibilities, and a lot of collaboration with third parties to make them compatible with our system, flash companies, etc. So, so uh, Carl Jones is asking. Is a 180-400 F4 something that you guys put out for sports guys? That's a crazy sounding lens. Oh, 180-400. Oh, okay, 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 yeah. Because um, F4 in the works. Mm. Another one, yeah, from the F mount, right. I see, you know what? Um, He's putting a note in the nah, back of his head. I can I, see I, it. I, 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 I can't speculate any more than yes. what's on the roadmap. Andy, I'm with you. The 8-50mm to 50 millimeter fisheye zoom on oh, the right, F right mount there, yeah, 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 yeah. So that, that's so, one that I, I still have to go to the uh, F mount for. I still, I, I keep my adapter on that one. Like, I don't even take it off. Like, right, that's, of course, yeah, just it, leave it on. That is that's one of the really, funnest lens. That's a really um, versatile lens because you could really put it on DX or FX. Oh, true. Um, and then if you put it on 8 on FX, you'll get the full circle, circle if you take off the hood. Every so that was a brilliantly designed lens when they, when they came out with that. So when I was shooting BMX in the beginning of my career, that lens was amazing. You got the full circle, didn't have to change the lenses, you went in a little tighter, still got the super wide. I mean, everything with that type of photography was like the environment plus the guy doing whatever he was doing. So you were stepping super close while trying to get everything super wide. And if an editor asked you for something fun and weird out of this, just zoom out to eight, circle, bang. It was, oh, I still have that lens. It is so much fun. If you haven't tried that lens out, check it out in the used department here at Adorama or something like that. Uh, you won't regret it, trust me. If you like wide angle lenses, I love that lens. Um, and so on Z, it must be, whoa. Do you guys have any other questions in the chat? Because, uh, I mean, really what I wanted to bring Mark on here for was like to answer anything you guys have been lingering in your head. I see a lot of things being talked about in forums, but nobody who actually has any information, like legitimate information to give you or insight as to alternatives or other things. You got it right here. I'll just tell you a couple more things about the Plena lens here. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it, there's a new hood for it, so the, the, the hood is uh, new. It, it's not, I mean, just in case you guys are wondering, it, since it has the same oh, filter as the shift. others. Uh, oh, tilt shift. Ha, ha. You know something, for now, we're gonna have to uh, adapt. We're gonna have to adapt with the tilt shifts. We don't have uh, a tilt shift on the on the roadmap just yet, so I can't comment on anything beyond the roadmap. <laughs> tilt shifts are amazing, but I don't think you guys realize how specific those are for a lot of people. Like architecture guys love them. Uh, if you've ever shot four by five or anything with bellows, you're into it. But for the mass market, it's it's a very small percentage of people that pick those up. All right, but, but they're but very I cool to have. I want to see the chat. If you want to, if you want a tilt shift, what is the the one focal length that you'd want for a tilt? Oh, shift? this you is just it. Had, If you just had one. 
put it in the chat. What's, oh, what's yeah, actually, your, give what's us it? all your wish lists. I want to see everything you guys have been wanting from that guy because I want to see what's going on. Was there any thought given to 135 to take T's teleconverters? Ooh, oh, okay. yeah. Um, it's it's flat glass, right? Yeah, it, it goes all the way to the... It's not really recessed. It yeah. goes all the way to the back. So yeah, we'll there's no... The, based on the design, I'm not a optical engineer, but um, this would never uh, compute with that. You know, again, the real, the real concept behind this lens is to give the most immaculate image quality possible. And by having this wrap, this large rear element going almost flush with the sensor, we're giving you that. So everything about this lens, and I, again, like I say, $2,500 is not cheap. It's, it's, it's up there, you're, you're advanced to get that. But when you compare it to, uh, you know, the, like you said at the beginning, cinema lenses and even the Noct, it's, it's basically democratizing that level of performance to a broader base. Uh, yeah, Steve Line's asking if the front element's recessed. It absolutely is. Mm -hmm. um, I actually, everyone gives me a lot of hard time in my comments because I never throw hoods on my lenses usually. I don't like to travel with them. I don't like to have extra space. And I, and I like flare anyway. But this lens seems like, one, really hard to flare. Two, when they're recessed like this, you get away with a lot. And, and even protection-wise, you get away with a lot. And I also just, I kind of dig these designs. I'm telling you, this, you guys are onto something with this like 85-135 joint and everything's 82 millimeter filter thread. I'm really into it, I'm digging it. I like when systems are real systems and not just random models thrown out there, which I call them spec boxes. They're just like, yeah, we can do this, but it doesn't make sense to the lineup. Yeah, well, talking about making sense, I mean, we didn't, we came out with this in 2018, it's, it's five years later now, but you know, we started off with all the 1.8s. So we have a 20, 24, 35, uh, 50. 50 and 85, 85, all in the 1.8. So we have five really good, and they're all S line. So we have, you know, really good prime 1.8s. We have F4s in the form of that, you know, 24 to 70 F4 uh, quality, small, compact, reasonably priced. That. Um, even the 24 to 120. So we're able to create these lenses in a completely different price band, but make it super duper high resolution and high performance that totally outperforms whatever we did uh, at that price band on the F mount. And, and if you guys want to see that 50 millimeter 1.8 lens in action, check out Coffee with Creators on this channel. We just did two episodes. La yesterday was with Daniel Norton. That is 50 millimeters at 1.8 with the entire store in that bouquet. 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 A. A. So you can check that out. Don't forget that's a new series every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern. We're live here, so check that out. Um, there is a question about um, can, the, can this Plena use the same lens hood as the 50 millimeter 1.2? Is it a new lens hood? Mm, it's a new lens hood. It's a new so lens it's hood? It's not compatible. It's just the same filter size. All right. If it does, then I can use my Nisi filters. Ah, heartbroken there, buddy. Sorry. Right. Z8, I think also Z9, do not by default use sensor shield on shutdown. You have to configure to do that. Why didn't you make it a default setting? Well, that's a good question. Maybe we should. <laughs> Sometimes it's just that Here's easy. The thing. Yeah. Sometimes it's just like, I didn't, we didn't really think. Well, yeah. it's not really, they think about everything. There's a method to their madness. Um, first of all, the shutter shield takes time to deploy and to take out of the way. Some people just want to be able to pick up their camera and shoot right away. Yeah. So we put the primary goal of those people first. And then if people really want to protect the sensor, you know, they can invoke that. Yeah, so I used to not have the sensor shield on much because I'm in a studio a lot and I'm not changing lenses a lot. Mm -hmm. And also I don't want a moving part that has to be moving for no reason. Because that's no matter what you camera brand you're in, a moving part is a point for failure if something goes on or whatever. Which I'm going to address also. A lot of people ask, why can't the shutter cover the sensor? You do not want a sensor to be at the mercy of anything that's gonna mess with it when it's moving at 8,000th of a second, 20 frames per second. You do not wanna deal with, actually not 20 frames, like, like 10 frames a second. You don't wanna deal with something exploding in there because they chose the most fragile part of the camera oh, to yeah. be a protectant. Yes. So um, that's, my, that's my personal take on that. No, it, it should be everyone's take on that because you should never use a high precision timing device to you know, protect from dust and abrasion because that is the most important part of the camera, the physical shutter for those cameras that have a physical shutter. Um, it's, it was against our philosophy to use that as a, a rain cover or a dust protector. Now, speaking of physical shutters, did you guys do something to the ZF to make it feel more like 
a harder, like when you shoot this, you actually kind of feel that shutter more. I think it's just because you've been shooting with a Z8 and Z9 <laughs> and you've forgotten the feel of a shutter. <laughs> and, oh. it, and it just feels like a big clunk to you. But no, when I picked it up for the first time, that's how I felt when it, with the ZF. It's got this tactile reverberation and feedback when I click it. And that is part of the charm of this camera. I love the fact that it has a mechanical shutter. Uh, I love the fact that it has these brass dials. Yeah, which um, Ricci did the most Ricci. baller thing and sanded his down, oh. and I gotta give props to Ricci. I My wanna gosh. ask you this, because I didn't ask them <laughs> the day I shot this. Is this really a screw mount? It is, okay, so it's a screw mount, yes. For but the cable release. No, but it's not for the cable release. It doesn't go all the way down. It's, a, it's for the AR11 soft shutter button. So there is a screw mount in the, uh, here, and are you gonna? Oh, fine. I'll switch cameras for you well, after you, you make your studio to be like this. I so, just yeah, uh. in there. So unlike the ZFC, uh, uh, this is not just a flat um, metal here. There is a screw. So people have been questioning if that is for a, a plunger. Um, I actually myself thought it was. I did too. When I, I got it, and I went to the service department, and I picked one in, and it would not go in. So it is really just for the AR11 soft shutter release. So if you're going to get this camera, get that little accessory, and um, that's how they get you. See, they well, see that? You know, it's only see? probably twenty bucks. You guys you should get man. it because it, it just gives it that added touch of class. Well, they got to leave something for the ne for the next generation one that'll happen in a few years, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really thought that's what it was like. Man, they really thought of it being like an analog feeling camera. This is great. Uh, Nikon really does think about more about than people give them credit for. It's true. And I think that we're at an era where we're finally seeing where their thought process is going. Because Gen 1 is always like a Gen 1 thing. And it's like that slog. Now you're really seeing the stride. I'm really excited for this system. I'm really psyched to be like kind of in it, honestly. The Z9, I've been, I've been beating the hell out of this thing forever. So I think Andy's saying, uh, he's asking about Bluetooth trigger for the ZF. Or um, SnapBridge, or SnapBridge. Snap Snap yeah, you can do SnapBridge. Um, I believe it's also compatible with the uh, Bluetooth remote, which is the uh, MLL7. So this is a point of contention. Uh, Nicholas is asking about a D500, which would basically be a Z500. They're basically asking for a crop sensor pro body. And this has been something that's been like, back and forth. Um, I'm in the camp of, yes, I understand pixel density and all that, but for the price and form factor of full frame now, it's kind of, you could shoot DX if you wanted to shoot crop sensor. And yes, the pixel density is different than if it was a crop sensor, that 20 megapixel, whatever, but I'd rather just be able to go into full frame at this point. Um, and I understand the small lenses, but I, I, I'm not in the, it. The pixel density is not all that different when you go in DX crop mode. Like for example, with a D500, it was about, I think it was about 20 megapixel. If you go to a crop mode from 45 to DX, it's it's right around there actually. I believe it's right around 19 megapixel. If you go, I think from, those are my pixel size comparable. Oh no, it would be the same. It would be the same pixel pitch because effectively you're going to a smaller area and using was, only those right. amount of pixels. So, in answer to your kind of speculation about the D500 style coming to the Z mount, I can't mention anything about that in the future. But with the D, with the Z8, it's effectively it's, even with the D850, you had the way I positioned it is you had both cameras in one. You had a D850 when you needed it. But built into there was a D500 in that you could go down to that same pixel density, pixel pitch, when you go to the DX crop. So, uh, and the, but what's better about the Z8 versus the D850 is that you don't have to suffer with the blacked out edges. You will get the entire frame either in the sensor, I mean in the screen or in the viewfinder when you go to DX crop, unlike a DSLR. So, you know, in answer to that, we don't have, um, you know, a, a, let's say a pro body style for a D500 in the Z system. But if that pro body style is what you're looking for, look at the Z8. I know it is $4,000. That's the thing, the DX would be like, they're, they're basically looking for that flagship in half the cost, right? right? And that's fair. And that's what the D500 was. It was like this hot rod, yeah. this little hot rod. Yeah, that's fair. And I get it, but I think we're also in a place where a $2,000 full frame is actually faster frames per second, full frame, and the, I, I just think it's there. The only thing you got me on is maybe like the size of the lenses aren't as small as DX lenses. And That's never, it. It's hard to do that because the, the, the mount is so large. So even if we make, uh, you know, lenses, the only thing that we can do is compress the um, length. We can't really do much about no, the, I know, I the know. width. It, it's, it's a really, I, I, and I'm curious. I'm, I'm hearing you, but a lot of people say that about the, about the D500. Uh, there, there is, um, where was it? Uh, They're basically saying like, yeah, the, the Z500 they want a 33 megapixel to shoot tiny birds far, far away. 
Uh, but they are asking, is there 36 megapixel camera? Mega, no, 30 pixel. Ah! Mm -hmm. 36 megapixel cameras again. Um, I mean, would you guys want the Gen 3 Z6 to be higher res like that? I kind of like nimble mid-range cameras like that because the files are cleaner and lower light. Yeah. I like that they're lighter files by, I mean, now that we have uh, HE Star, I don't think it matters anymore, the size of the file. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> and here's the thing is, we, we just came out with the ZF. It is a 24 megapixel, but I mean, for, for video, we can generate, you know, a 6K readout and downsample it to a, a clean, clean 4K. And so when it comes to these cameras, a lot of times they're being used in hybrid situations. So we got to think about the readout, what we're going to generate from that. And um, the, the combination of 45 and 24 gives us a lot of options. So when we want the higher performance at, at the low light, we can go with a 24 megapixel. But the, the 45 gives us a lot of um, cropping options, resolution options, frame rate options, um, and that. So more so than a 36, I would say. Yeah, I think if the ZF is, and he can't say this, but I can, so that's the, that's the benefit of being here. I, in my opinion, this is giving you an insight into what Gen 3 is going to come through. If XP7, the new processor is going into all the new releases, Z9, Z8, now ZF at a $2,000 price point, which is like a mid-range, right, like a, a banger camera. If the Gen 3 comes and we're looking at that as the progression, that, and keep in mind, when a camera drops, it has to hold the market for like three years. It has to be able to be not obsolete or out spec or something for at least that long, right? Two, three years. If this is what we're getting here, what do you think the Gen 3 is gonna be like? This is kind of a look into what they're bringing in Gen 3, so I'm super excited for it. I, I mean, you're looking at us on Z62s. This whole event space is uh, six Z62s as a multicam. So I, I'm, I'm with, I'm in this system, trust me. I deal with it every day, so I hear This you. is six Z62s. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, one, two, three, yeah. four. Five, six. Awesome. Yeah, man. Thanks, Heather. <laughs> there you go. All right, you guys have any questions about the 135 plena? The plena is such a strange thing to say. Plena? Yeah, plena, plena. but you said it correctly. Plena. It's not plena, it's plena. And it's engraved in there. Oh, it's Yeah, it like, is engraved. So that's a metal exterior that we put an in, in, engraving on. So it is built um, It feels just like the 85. Spec. Yeah. Like it feels so 85. Somebody mentioned on the chat that they that they uh, we didn't publish it on our Nikon USA channel yet, but Europe already did. They, they published the engineering interviews oh. for this. So on the Nikon Europe channel, you can watch three engineering interviews for the Plena, and um, they reveal the initial drafts of the Plena, where the the front element was like massive, massive. Yeah. But th this design that they have here with the 82 millimeter front. Um, is is so much more. I mean, just like the the 85, it's like got a nice gradual angle to it when it gets to the front, but it's it's perfectly hand holdable. So, and uh, speaking of the hand holdable, the manual focus ring is going to be uh, out of the gates compatible with linear focus for those of you that do video on a Z8, Z9, and also when it comes out, the ZF will be compatible with linear focus. Oh, really? So, meaning to say that um, if you're doing video, you can program the rotation of the dial, whether it's 90 degrees, 360 degrees, even up to 720 degrees two times around from going from near to far. You can even reverse the rotation. So for those of you coming from other systems using, uh, everything's customizable on this. You can rotate it in the other direction. I'm taking your lens. Yeah. I don't care. <laughs> That's yours. Oop. Yeah. I. Uh... I just want to see it on a Z9. I've only seen it on, on a Z9. Z9. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. So I'm going to plug in. I'm going to see if I can plug in my HDMI straight up so you guys can you see go. through the there camera. I'm not hiding anything or whatever. All right, let me see if it comes up. Because the EVF comes... Oh, man, I'm making a cable mess like I've never seen. I think here. we need Fahad to... He can be our model and just come up and, and... Well, so this is... Can you guys see this? Yeah, you should, right? Yeah. So that's the store in the background. Here's Fahad's face. The background, Fahad's face. The background, Fahad's face. Now let's do 1.8. Yeah, one point yeah, one point eight. Fahad's face. Background, Fahad's face. Joe in the back, Fahad's face. Background, Fahad's beautiful face. And Fahad's blue because I blow. I, I make everything blue in the store. So <laughs> there's a blue light right above. I mean, this this it's focusing so fast, guys. I don't think you guys realize how far to near this is traveling. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this is cool, man. Ooh. 
What's were you up, using bro? 3D? Or, oh, no, 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 you're just using AF. Yeah, well, I have a button so it does recall like that, and right. then I have a single point. Oh, okay, there you I go. I shoot yeah. single point a lot, and then when I see a face, I just squeeze this button, and they'll see faces like Got Bill it. back there, and now Shoba. Cool. So that's in real time, guys, yep. uh, on my Z9. And because it's mounted to my camera, Mark has to leave this lens here now. Yeah, I mean, what you just showed there is a good example because, you know, even with our 135 in the past, I mean, it, it gives nice results, but the focus is nowhere near that level of speed and accuracy because if, you know, you didn't take a picture with it, but once you take a picture with these 45 megapixel sensors and you zoom in, it's really satisfying once you nail it. Look at it. this image. This is yep. the chairs in the event space. Look, it makes everything look special. Yeah, right. Are you kidding me? That is just a chair in the event space after just putting the camera down. You are now an instant influencer. Enjoy your life, <laughs> enjoy your Instagram, enjoy your TikTok in it, whatever. Uh, even Sal says it's impressive, and that guy is hard, he's from Italy, he's hard to impress. He's <laughs> so I, uh, I think we're pretty good, guys. If you uh, want to check it out, the link is in the description for the full specs. Um, but write comments. If you watch this after the fact, write comments. We'll try to answer the best we can. I only have limited experience with the lens. I'll do what I can me, to answer it. Can I answer one more? Oh, for, my God. Uh, you're such a diva. Yes. No, it's uh, UltraSync Blue on oh, do the it. ZF. Do it. Affirmative. Do you want me to go to camera two? Do you want me to show the menu? Yeah. yeah. Well, sure. Why not? Can you see it? Yeah, uh, here we go. Air glue, holla. <laughs> I think he was asking if this is compatible. Andy Miller again from the UK asking if UltraSync Blue. Andy Miller's all over yeah, us today. This go. guy's like. So yeah, I have one of those UltraSync Blues and it's, it's pretty amazing that you can just uh, sync all of these up. Yeah, no, I think um, when we heard, I, th I think you'd see a lot from the, uh, the release of the Z9 where they listed a long list of brands you guys partnered with to make sure there was compatibility and collaborations and things for the Z9. And that continues through the rest of the lineup. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know what? It is lighter than the Z85. Yeah, you got it. You got it. Oh, it, uh, yeah, it is lighter. Oh, damn. Okay, in your hand, if you close your eyes, you could only tell them apart from like a little bit heavier on the 85. Mm -hmm. So if that helps you guys out, but I really like that we have the same filter on all these, man. Twinsies. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Let's go to camera one. I have the most expensive eyes in the world. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, listen, Mark, it's always fun when you stop by. I'm glad we got to do this. Yeah, it's uh, fun. Yeah, man. Um, thanks it, for having us. Yeah, of course, always. And uh, listen, if you guys have any questions, again, write them down those comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and the bell. There's a lot of stuff going on over here. But also, don't forget, over here... Adorama Events, go to the Events channel, you'll see everything that's coming up that you can come join us at here in the event space, off campus, and also virtually online. And there's the new Events channel that's live. So if you wanna see a lot of stuff that's coming out of here, go follow the new Adorama Events on YouTube channel so you guys can, I have, oh, wow, that's a low blow. I finally have 2020 vision. Nice, thanks it's guys. Right. Listen, if I, if I can shoot as well as I have been for 25 years with being blind as I am with these glasses, I'll take it, all right guy? <laughs> Listen, man, thank you so much, man. All right. Let's go, uh, let's go get some nush. Later, guys. Bye.